Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial by Zebra Code. In this tutorial, we are going to look at SML elements and attributes. Every SML file has practically two prominent features. They are element and attribute. The data that you work with in an SML document is represented within elements and attributes. What then is an SML element? An element is a user-defined tag that holds information in an SML document. Practically, elements are the building block of every SML document. They are, to a high degree, like variables in most computer programming languages. If you are familiar with some computer programming languages, you will see elements in SML like variables in other programming languages. Usually, elements in an SML document contain the actual information in the document, and they indicate the logical structure of the information in the document. There are some key facts about elements in an SML document. An element consists of a start tag, content, an end tag, or can be a self-closing element tag. An element can have child elements or be a nested element. Here is an example. This is an element product. This is the opening tag for the product element and this is the closing tag for the product element. The product element tag holds the data sewing machine. Now let's look at attribute. What is it? What is an attribute? An SML attribute specification is a name value pair that is associated with an element. By adding an attribute, we provide an alternative way to add information to an SML. That is, adding an attribute provides an alternative way to add information to an element. Within the start tag of an element, or within an empty element tag, you can include one or more attribute specifications. Here is an example. We have an element here, student. It has an attribute status with a value enrolled, another attribute gender with a value female. Then the data for the student attribute, Juliet Evans, which of course is the name of the student. This is an element with a start tag and an end tag. The second line here is same as the first one but done in a slightly different way. Here we have the element start tag student, the status attribute with the value enrolled, the gender attribute with the value female, and the name attribute with the value Juliet Evans. This is an empty element or a self-closing element. So this way, this element student has some attributes. In other words, this is an element with some attributes. Here we have the same data presented, but as element, student is an element with child elements. Here we are only using elements, no attributes. Student element has child elements. Status is an element. Gender is an element. Name is also an element. Normally, we can associate unlimited number of attributes to an element. There is no limit for the number of attributes that an element can have. However, there are some rules that we need to follow when we create an element with some attributes. Here are some rules for creating SML attributes. 
An SML attribute specification involves adding an attribute name followed by an equal sign and followed by an attribute value within a single quote or within double quotes. Attributes follow SML naming conventions. They start with a letter, underscore, and they cannot start with a number. You can use attribute names with a namespace by following namespace conventions. Namespace is another topic that we will cover later on on this series. Here is an example of the prologue of an SML document. It has some attributes and the attributes have values. The attributes and values here follow the rules for creating SML attributes. Why do we use attributes? We can use attributes to provide alternative ways to add information to an element. There are some benefits of attributes with DTD as document type definition. We will cover this later on on this series. If you write a valid SML document using document type definition, DTD, you can restrict the type of data that can be assigned to an element attribute. In that case, you can even specify a default value that will be assigned to an attribute if the specification is omitted. We will do more of this later on on this series. Common practice. There are some methods that you can follow in actually writing or working with an SML document that involves elements and attributes. Usually, you place the bulk of the elements data that you wish to display within the elements content. While you use attributes to store respective properties of the elements that you do not essentially plan to display. Now, with this out of the way, let's look at some SML documents with elements and attributes. I have created here two files. I named them elements.sml and attributes.sml. Let's look at the two files one at a time. I will start with the elements.sml file. Here is a comment, country, continent, and population SML document. This SML document contains the name of countries, the continent they belong, and the population. As a disclaimer here, please, the exact population figure may not be right, but let's look at the document from SML element and attribute perspective. The Element node here is countries. The document opens with the node countries. Let's scroll down and it ends here with countries. The document contains some countries. The first one here is the element name. This is the opening tag and this is the closing tag. We use only elements, no attributes. This elements.sml document contains four countries we have here one zimbabwe two brazil three mongolia and four australia everything here is represented with sml element no attributes now let's look at the second document which is attributes.sml this document contains exactly the same data for the first one but here we have both element and attribute so this data is represented with elements and attributes here we have the root node countries same as we had in the other one we have here country which is one element name 
Zimbabwe, location, Africa, population, and this is the value. Here again, we have another country element, name, Brazil, location, South America, population, and this is the value. Here, we have another country element, name, Mongolia, location, Asia, population, this is the value. Then, the fourth one, the last but not the least, country element, name, Australia, location, Oceania, population, and this is the value. So these two files contain exactly the same data, but the structures are somehow different, even though they are both SML documents. And look at another thing here. Right at the top, we have the prologue, the SML declaration, version, which is an element, equals double quotes, one point zero then double quotes the same thing here another attribute encoding equals double quote the value is utf hyphen eight double quotes so this is how you use elements and attributes in sml the purpose of this video was to explain to you how to work with elements and attributes in SML. Every SML document contains elements, attributes, and values, which is the data that they hold. We are going to be working with a lot of SML documents and we will be coming across these two features, elements and attributes. I hope you learned something from this video. If you have not subscribed to this channel, kindly subscribe to the channel and remember to click on the notification button so that each time I post a new video, YouTube will notify you. See you in my next video. Bye for now.